Hi, it's Jan Beta, and today I want to take a look at a gaming console for a change. And it's this Sega Mega Drive 2 that is in pretty poor condition. Let's see what we can do. This was donated to me by Anthony, who donated a bunch of things a while back to the channel. Thank you for that. I'm slowly going through all of them and uh, today is the time to look at this. It's a Sega Mega Drive 2, which is like a cost reduced, slightly smaller version of the first Mega Drive. Anthony already had a go at fixing this, I think. And he noted on this little post-it note that the 7805 voltage regulator may have been savaged. I have no idea what that looks like, but we're going to find out shortly. Yeah, the case is super dirty, but it looks intact. Uh, Anthony also wrote zerbrochen on here, which means broken, kind of. Messi 7805, so yeah, we're going to take a look inside and see what we can do to fix this and clean up the case and things like that to make this shine again, hopefully. So this seems to have four screws on the bottom that we have to remove to open this up. Never worked on a Mega Drive 2 before. So... Let's see. <laughs> and it says a rude word on here. That means it's broken, I guess. Uh, there's no connection to the top cover. So that's unlike the original Mega Drive 1. But there's plenty of shielding in here. Power switch. I'm going to have to remove the RF shield. There's a couple of screws around the perimeter that I can see, so just going to have a go. There don't seem to be any broken off plastic parts or things like that on this case, so that's nice. Even if we don't get this to work, we still get a nice condition. Just dirty Mega Drive 2 case. Ah, and this just lifts out. So there we are. Yeah, as I said, this is the cost reduced version of the original Mega Drive. And as you can see, there's a lot less on this main board than on the original Mega Drive main board. So yeah, there is the processor, which is this PLCC form factor on this one, not the huge 68K processor that is in the original Mega Drive. There also doesn't seem to be a Z80 processor. There's this interesting thing here, which uh, I don't know, some kind of hybrid chip with a lot of small surface mount capacitors on there, it seems, and something that resembles, I don't know, a chip blob. I don't know anything about these, as you can probably tell by my ramblings here. We have a reset button. That's the same button they used on the Mega Drive 1 these are not very good. And this is our power switch, I think. Also pretty cheap. This heatsink here is where our voltage regulator that allegedly is broken in a bad way is located. So let's take a look at that at first, I guess. So it seems like at this point I can just lift this out of the case completely. Yep. And there's the bottom shield as well, and kind of a holder for the cartridge port, so it doesn't get pushed in, I guess. Let me take a second to thank the sponsor for this video, PCBWay, my favorite manufacturer of prototype circuit boards of all kinds. They offer excellent quality circuit boards. They also have other services like 3D printing, CNC machining and things like that. I highly recommend checking out the website that is linked in the video description. Check them out. Back to the Mega Drive. So here's where the 7805 is soldered to the board. It doesn't look that bad. There have been attempts to rework this, I think. Also on this cartridge connector here. 
but yeah, it doesn't look that bad really. So we need to desolder that, I guess, and see. Can't see any really bad things on here. There have been some, some of these joints have been resoldered, I think. There's a flux residue on them. But other than that, this looks pretty decent, actually. Yeah, we're going to try to desolder the 7005 at first and go from there. I think this is just clipped into this heatsink, so we should be able to remove it without desoldering the heatsink. I guess I'm going to add some flux and use my desoldering station to see if I can desolder this. Okay, that's... the solar doesn't even melt. Oh, and there's the lifted pad. The center pin has a lifted pad. So, yeah, some tinkering is going to be necessary. Uh, the center pin is just ground on these, so that shouldn't be too difficult to patch up, I guess. We're going to see. Need some more persuasion. <laughs> I'm using some solar wick to try and remove the rest of the solder here. But really, it's not as salvaged as I thought, so it should totally be salvageable. I'm going to try to remove the whole heatsink assembly here. Going to be difficult, <laughs> because heatsinks take away a lot of the heat. But maybe we can remove our voltage regulator at this point. Our pins might be loose now. Yep, our pins are loose. Let's see if we can pull this out of here in some way. Okay, we have to remove the heatsink, I guess. The heatsink is already super hot because obviously it takes the heat from the soldering iron. I wonder how they do that in the factory. <laughs> we should be able to heat this up slowly. Yeah, it's super crispy already. Solar pump to the rescue. Well, yeah, that kind of works. After heating this up for quite a while. Okay, now the solar wick starts working as well. That's good. So obviously the heatsink is hot at this point because I heated it up quite significantly. I'm going to try to wiggle it with a pair of pliers. And it seems to come loose. It's coming. Yep. Got it. Didn't do any significant damage, I don't think. <laughs> yeah. Uh, removed it. And it seems this heatsink is constructed in a way so that, that you can't pull the regulator out to the top. You have to stick it in from the bottom. So this should come out towards the bottom. Yep, there are some fins here that prevent you from pulling this out. You can probably bend them aside and pull it out. But I didn't see. So yeah, I removed the whole thing. This indeed is the 7805S. It's a 2 amp version of the 7805, I think. So we're going to replace that with a 78S05 again. But first, let's see if any of the traces on the circuit board are damaged. The traces actually look intact. Bit lifted. Uh, let's see if there's a short there, maybe. So this is our 7805. Oh, this is shorted. Okay, these two pads seem to be shorted together, which is not good. The ground is the center pin and that should be connected to the ground on the board, obviously, which it is. That's good. But this is our uh, input voltage pin, I think. That shouldn't be shorted to ground. So let's see what we can do. I'm going to clean this up a bit more. And maybe it's just a solar blob that got stuck there. I think so. The bottom and the center pin are shorted together, which they really shouldn't be. So I'm going to do some more cleaning up of the pads here. See if that fixes our issue 
or maybe I have to cut some of the rubbish that's on there with a knife. It might just be solder that's between these. Let's see. Let's try that again. Still have a dead short there, so I'm going to try to scrape the space in between. Yeah, that's better. Okay, I'm going to do some more cleanup. I think there was some bent metal that got between those pins. Just slightly dug into the circuit board there with my pokey bit. <laughs> it seems there was a piece of bent metal from the pad that shorted these two pins together. And now there's no short anymore. There's a bit of a ripped portion on the center pad. So maybe I'm going to add a little botch wire to one of these uh, pads for the heat heatsink here. These are also connected to ground, so that shouldn't be an issue. I think I want to solder in a new voltage regulator and go from there. So I got some 78S 05s. I assume this is a 78S 05. It says 7805S, but it should be the same. I'm going to add some heatsink plaster to this. That's potentially going to be a bit messy, but uh, usually helps with the heat. Heat conductivity. So I should be able to put this in here. Like so. Yay, and it's a bit messy. I'm going to clean some of that before I solder this in, I guess. But we should have good heat conductivity. Can I center this a bit? Yes, some cleaning. Not even sure if this is going to work, but just going to use my screwdriver. Yeah, that works surprisingly well, actually. There we go. And into the circuit board it goes. Yeah, I'm going to solder the heat sink first, I think. And this is going to take quite some heating up. Soldering in the regulator itself. That should be way easier. Yeah, and we don't have any shorts on the pins anymore. Center pin is connected to ground. I'm also going to inspect this uh, closely and resolder some of the reworked joints there, I think. Because you never know. Uh, I think I want to do some more cleaning, especially on this power switch. Uh, there's a lot of dust on there that I'm going to remove and I'm also going to spray some contact cleaner into the cartridge port and the other ports. Uh, there's actually a mini DIN graphics port here. This is a bit bent as well, so I hope I can fit my cable that I bought for this in there. This has another power socket than the Mega Drive 1 or the Genesis 1. This is a slightly smaller barrel plug and it's also center positive opposed to the center negative supply that the Mega Drive 1 uses. Also the voltage is 10 volts instead of 9 volts. I think you probably would get away with the 9 volt supply, but according to the specifications this is meant to be used with a 10 volt 850 milliamp supply, so we're going to botch something that can provide that voltage because I don't have a dedicated power supply. I bought a monitor cable for this so let's see if we can put that in here. This supposedly is an RGB cable with a SCART plug on the other end and the mini DIN on the end that goes into the console so let's see. Okay it's a tight fit but it does fit. I'm going to uh, spray some contact cleaner in there. Also into the cartridge port and into the joystick ports. This doesn't have a headphone jack as the original Mega Drive had. Just inserting this a couple of times to clean the contacts in there. 
hopefully. Uh, yeah, this, as I said, this looks slightly bent and it feels slightly bent, so somebody applied some force to that and tried to insert the cable in the wrong direction, I guess. As for the power supply, as I said, this uses a slightly smaller plug than the original. This is a 1.7 millimeter barrel plug EIAJ03. And this should be a center positive 10 volts supply. So this should fit in here. Yeah, that fits. I'm going to use my bench power supply here to power this, I think, for now. And I'm going to see if this works at all. That's this one. So I'm going to mark the one that's positive with the red marker, just so we don't get the polarity wrong. And then I'm just going to clip some leads onto here and connect them to my bench power supply. So uh, setting up my bench power supply to 10 volts. And this is current limited, which is also a good idea if you're powering something on that you don't know if it's working correctly. Red lead to the positive and the black lead to the negative. And uh, these have clips, so we can clip them onto our adapter. And we have 10.2, I'm going to adjust that for straight up 10 volts. 9.999, okay, that's good enough for me. It would be kind of amazing if this just worked right away. I'm also going to put a cartridge in to be able to see if we get anything. Winter challenge. I guess uh, not much to lose. Turning on the power. And turning on the power switch. And we get a loud hum, but the game is starting. I think, at least it displayed something. Let's try another cartridge. Maybe the cartridge doesn't work. There we go. I connected a controller. Let's see what we get. Yep. That does work indeed. Nice. <laughs> yeah, that's one working Mega Drive. Let's see if the reset button works. Okay, reset. I'm going to spray some more contact cleaner into there, I guess. Sometimes works. Power button though, seems to work fine. Yeah, the reset button ceased working. Completely no. I'm going to have to take that apart, I guess. So here's our reset button. And I think this is basically the same as a keyboard button with this rubber dome on there that I might be able to take out of that. Yeah. And then there's just like a carbon contact on the bottom here that we can clean. That's super tiny, as you can see. So uh, I'm going to clean that with a Q-tip and also the contacts in here, which might re-enable our reset button. Let's see if we can get that back in there. It's a bit fiddly. <laughs> Especially if everything's wet with contact cleaner. <laughs> okay, that's going to be a challenge. I'm not giving up just yet. As it turns out, it's uh, relatively impossible, at least for me, to put this silicon dome back on here after cleaning this. Uh, so I am going to try to use a trick that I found on a YouTube video, and that is to raise this plastic lip that goes around the parameter here slightly with a small screwdriver. There's a very tiny lip there that it's not really easy to insert anything. And there's like four sections, as you can see. I'm just going to use 
a screwdriver here. Hopefully not destroying this too much. And carefully twisting it while I'm in this ridge that goes around the whole parameter. Yeah, this works a whole lot better than before. Because, yeah, the ridge is super tiny. So the lip on the silicon is compressed into that, I think, uh, with a machine or a tool that I don't have. <laughs> yeah, got it in there. So this is, of course, not the ideal way of fixing these. It's better to get a replacement, I guess. But it should technically be a functioning button again. Maybe. It's pretty obvious that this has been tinkered with at this point, but maybe this works again like this. I bend the uh, lip up a bit and then just bend it down to hold it in place. It does kind of work. That's better than before, actually. You have to push it in a bit in the center there. Okay, I guess that's uh, promising. It's better than before, at least. <laughs> so I cleaned the cartridge port a bit more. And now I can even wiggle the cartridge. It would stop before. So I think I cleaned this to an extent where it actually works reliably. Electrically, this seems to be working fine. So with the electronics back in business, I'm going to take a look at these case parts and think I can just remove these buttons carefully, maybe, by pushing these tabs in and then pushing them through. This all shall go into some soapy water. I can also remove this light channel tunnel plastic part for the LED. And this is, apart from some springs, uh, this is just plastic. I think I'm not going to bother removing this bracket here for the cartridge port. I am going to remove the shielding here. This part... Uh, this should just lift out. Yeah. Okay, so the plastic parts go into some soapy water. I'm going to give the RF shields a wipe down with some isopropanol alcohol. And we should be good to go, I guess. I'm just going to clean these parts up in the sink. And I'm going to give them some window cleaner and some dish soap and let them soak and then carefully clean them with a toothbrush in some more water. While the case parts dry in the kitchen, uh, I cleaned the RF shields and I also cleaned my cartridges with Q-tips and some isopropanol. And I even got Winter Challenge to work reliably now. So it really was just a matter of cleaning the edge connector on the cartridge itself to make this work. It's nothing to do with the Mega Drive. So I guess this is a fully working Mega Drive. And uh, as soon as the case parts are dried and uh, cleaned completely, I'm going to put it back together. My case parts are back from the sink and they are pretty scratched, but they actually came out a lot nicer than they were, obviously, because they were pretty dirty. Um, still want to give these a final rub down with some IPA, I think, and uh, get into some of these little indentations with a toothbrush. There's a lot of these little uh, 
recessed bits and things like that on here. Don't know if that's a good design decision. It looks nice, <laughs> but it's getting dirty really easily. It's pretty easy to get dirt in there that is not easily removed. We are going to stick these buttons back in, I guess. Should just clip in, yes. And obviously these have power and reset written on them. So you don't want to get them in upside down. This is our power button and the LED assembly or the light tunnel for the LED. The LED, the actual LED is on the board as you've seen. Bottom shielding should be this one, like this. This is a lot easier to work on than the old, the old one. There we go. That's our circuit board in place. Top cover. Something like so. Uh, and of course, obviously, I could recap this like change the electrolytic capacitors on this board completely because uh, these components age, as you probably know. But I won't do that in this video. Um, probably going to go back in there at some point and do that because these are 1993 is when this was made. It's nearly been 30 years now. Can you believe it since 1993? <laughs> But this is not too bad to take apart compared to the Mega Drive 1. So I'm probably going to go in here at some point and replace all the electrolytic capacitors. The lid comes on here like this. Our buttons are moving, so I'm going to put the screws back in on the back. There we go. That is one repaired and cleaned up Sega Mega Drive 2. <laughs> yeah. This thing seems to work fine still. Yeah, so that was kind of an easy fix. Uh, it seems to work flawlessly at this point. Uh, I have some more plans for this. Uh, one of the first ones is getting a dedicated power supply for this. As I said, 10 volts, center positive barrel plug that you need for these. And I don't have one. So I'm going to have to order one. There are several places where you can get replacement power supplies for these and they should all work. No problems whatsoever. Nothing fancy about those. Hope you enjoyed this video. That's it for today. Thank you very much for your support on Patreon and on the YouTube channel memberships page and elsewhere. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for giving me thumbs and thank you for your comments. I'm Jan Beta. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye. That reset button, by the way, it does work flawlessly now. <laughs>